Welcome to Roland's Travels. Today we're taking a walk around Stonehenge, the very famous Stonehenge with the stone circle, and this is the visitor centre that we first reach. The centre and the stones are managed by English Heritage and the landscape by the National Trust, so members of both organisations can enter using the special uh, gateway if you've pre-booked online. If you haven't pre-booked, you'd have to display your ticket on the left-hand column. So we arrive by bus rather than walk the mile and a half to the stones and as you can see it's a glorious day, the sun is shining but it is a very cold wind sweeping across the Salisbury Plains landscape. The ravens greet us. Sadly I don't have any food for them. So we're walking our way up to the stones now. You can't actually touch the stones anymore. Many years ago when I was younger, you were able to go right up to the stones, touch them. But now there's a little barrier. It'd be easy to jump over, but there is security. Watching the visitors, making sure they don't get too excited and jump over the rope to go and touch the stones. Many years ago, these stones would have looked different. They'd been weathered and chipped away at by visitors over the years. And some of them, of course, are actually missing now. However, the sarsen stones, the biggest ones, would have been white in appearance, and the blue stones and the bright light would have been a, a dark blue sort of colour. So it would have been quite a dramatic thing for any ancient visitor coming along to Stonehenge. It's around four and a half thousand years old, and uh, it is surrounded by a ditch, hence the word henge, which means a ditch. As you can see there, that's the ditch running around Stonehenge. And there are many earthworks in this area, and of course, uh, across many parts of the world, making stone circles has been something the people of that era did. We'll talk about more about uh, stones in another country later on in the video. So as you walk around, you get different views. So it's nice to see the stones in all their glory, particularly in the sunshine on this November day when I visited. I even get my shadow in. With the sun being so low in the sky this time of year, of course, uh, you do have shadows. So I'll leave myself in there for you. I'm making a, an unexpected appearance as we walk around the stones. Lots of visitors today. There are Americans and Japanese, Chinese, South Americans, people from all over the world taking a look at these stones. Sadly for many they seem to arrive, take a five minute look, jump back on a coach and away they go. And it's uh, more or less a tick box exercise in visiting places, which I think is sad. It's nice to spend a little bit longer learning about the history and the visitor centre helps to do that. We'll take a look at that after we've looked at the stones here. hear the wind blowing a little bit. Do try and keep the microphone as muffled as possible with a muffler over it and my coat trying to stop the wind passing over the microphone causing too much wind noise. So we're about a halfway round here just coming up as we go around the Salisbury Plain over this grassland. Now the area would have looked like this years ago apparently. It was pasture land so it wasn't wooded there are a few trees around now that have been planted over the years but it would have been open and the National Trust have gone to great lengths to restore it to how it would have been in those days and the, the rising ground that you can see, the little hills, they are burial mounds so that um, you'll be able to see them as you go around you'll see many of these throughout Wiltshire one of the largest you ever come across is at Silbury Hill on the A4 between Chippenham and Marlborough, close to Marlborough and the arrow you can see there, that's the sort of north, uh, sorry, the west east line uh, showing the line on the compass. And of course, this is an astronomical calculator, so uh, Stonehenge comes its to its, into its own really on Midsummer Day and Midwinter's Day, 21st of June and 21st of December. You can see the long shadows being cast by this morning sunlight. It is. Uh, gone well gone 11 o'clock when I'm filming this so it is quite low in the sky as you can see many of the tombs around Stonehenge were built after so the people who were dying were buried in this area and the 
Chloris keep coming as you can see and it, the size indication of the stones you can work out from the size of the people you can see in the video footage here. Lots of research has been done on how the stones got here. The sarsen stones, the biggest ones, are actually fairly local. They come from about 20 miles away in the Marlborough Downs. The blue stones come from West Wales, right over by the southwest coastline of Wales. So they would have either been brought around by sea or transported over land until they reached the Bristol Channel. And we're taking the coach back now to the visitor centre, getting out of that cold wind. And as we reach the visitor centre, look, we have roundhouses. Great work has been done here on recreating roundhouses. Of course, roundhouses are probably still built today, if you think about the ones you might see in Africa and such places, South America, where people tend to build their houses generally in a round shape with a thatch roof on top. And when you go in these places, they're actually not cold really. I know there's never going to be any heating this time of year. They're not going to set a fire in there either uh, for visitors to uh, warm up with but it was quite pleasantly um, mild really inside this structure. And quite a complicated roofing isn't it? The thatching very thick would have kept them warm well insulated and these were where they would have laid their material to sleep on their beds and a seal roof there. Now, of course, when the smoke went up, it would have eventually passed out through the thatching, but it would have been quite a smoky affair in there with a fire in the centre burning away. We'll take a look inside this other one as well, shall we? There you go, there's the bedding area. A little area where you could store things on the far side. And it's amazing what you can do with some wood, even in its fairly raw state that it's been used there. Now this is one, it's a replica of a sarsen stone, so it's showing you how large this thing is. And it raises that question, can you move the stone? Well, it would take an awful lot of moving, even with the sort of rollers underneath the, the logs there that make a roller system. It's a pretty hefty sized thing. And on the end, they've even cast the joint where a top stone would have fitted on. And this is the visitor centre from the back. They've built it in such a nice way. It's quite a natural looking building. And as we go into the visitor centre, you've got this wonderful panoramic screen which tells you the story of Stonehenge through the day. So it travels through seasons. And here we have the visitor centre with the displays, more displays. There are many artefacts you can take a look at as you go around, learning the story of Stonehenge. And uh, do give some time, rather than like those people who pop along, take a look at the stones and zoom off back again. Allow yourself time to really watch the story of Stonehenge through time and how it's developed. It is a fascinating story and obviously one where there has to be some speculation by archaeologists as to how things happened and they've given you a better view there of how it would have looked. As you can see with all the tops on everything in place. And we see some of the finds that they have dug up in the area from the burial mounds. Now there is a special exhibition of Japanese works here from the Circles of Stone and this particular uh, object coming up in a moment is the first time it's left Japan. It's 5,000 years old. A, a wonderful thing they found. So one last look at the visitor centre before I leave and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed yet please click the subscribe button before you go and if you'd like to visit Stonehenge do check out the English Heritage website and you'll see how you can book online your tickets so that you're ready for a quick processing through the system and guaranteed to be able to take a look around. Take care everybody. Bye for now.